Hello, everybody, and we are live. Um, how are you doing today, Kieran? Uh, not so bad, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling a little bit run down from the last few weeks of uh, pretty crazy hours, but uh, yeah, happy to be here. I know it's been, I think this is what our, our third try <laughs> now. I stuffed yeah. up the last one, then restream rugged us and uh and now here we are so uh now here we are yeah good to be talking to you it is so great to be talking to you and uh i'm pretty excited that we get to finally have you on and i have a ton of questions for you but i also have some really exciting questions that have come in from the community as well so now that we have the full time today i i feel like we can really get some work done let's do it so I'll just give a quick little introduction uh, about you and about Alluvium um, for all that are watching and don't know who you are, which I feel like at this point, how can you not know Kieran Warwick, right? Um, but Kieran is the CEO and co-founder of Alluvium. Uh, right now, they have just released their latest PB2 gameplay and we actually just had a tournament yesterday where tsg from your team joined us as one of our co-hosts for two days which was awesome uh and it's just been a fun-filled week of alluvium content and uh yeah it's just it's awesome to finally have you here and talk about uh pb2 talk about overworld and potentially get some additional leaks so uh yeah yeah, for sure. I, I actually, you're leaking something to me. I didn't even know that there was a tournament going on. I saw it like, I, I don't know, some people retweet all sorts of random stuff and tag me in it. And uh, I saw over the weekend, I've been a little bit sick over the weekend, but uh, I saw something was going on, but I wasn't really uh, aware of it. So yeah, was it a success or how'd it go? Oh, Who yeah. Won? It was so much fun. And uh, you might either love this or hate this. Our winner of the two-day tournament was Viper. And was I, I got some information that uh, he won another event in your Discord last week as well and uh, received more land than he had already gotten from our tournament. So... We've got some pretty good people that are really trying hard for, you know, for PB2. Yeah, I got to have a chat with him and uh, and see if he wants to take all of that land or if he wants to be a uh, team player and and share that with the community in some other like type of event where we say that uh, that Viper is is a hero and he's he's not gonna because. The thing is with my events is, and I didn't make this clear, so it's totally sweet. I, I'll have this chat with him. I was planning on speaking to him about this uh, over the weekend, but yeah, I was a little bit under the weather. And uh, with, our, with our tournaments, we or my like quizzes and stuff like that, we don't allow pros or like, you know, master level. And he's like a freak at TFT. And the reason is because we want to try and make it inclusive for the community. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very aware of, uh, of your guys, uh, skill level at Alimos. I know your, some of your head guys have, have been trying to poach some of the best esports players, which is really, really good for us. Uh, but yeah, when we're when we're doing like the the community sort of events, if they, I let them play for other people, but uh, but not usually for themselves, just because, uh, yeah, they uh, they wreck everyone. So, uh, but yeah, that's little side point. But anyway, so he won. That that doesn't oh, yeah. surprise me. Well done. He, he won, again. and it was it was such a close tournament at the very end that I really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and was the oh man, we for one we had Vulcan, TSG, and Vetimore all as the hosts. So I have to oh, point wow. that out. Like best Huge. host panel I have ever been able to witness. I was just helping out on the back end, but uh, the very end it was. Um, caveman from our team up against, um, 
uh, Viper and, um, oh man, it, it went on so long last night that I'm completely going blank on names. Um, and I will, they will come back to me, but it was, it was absolutely insane. And what's crazy was it went on for, for two days, but we went down from 16 qualifiers down to our champion. So it wasn't, Like it was just this super easy thing. We had everybody going all at the same time. And uh, by the end of it, everyone was exhausted. Uh, Shabim and Brian the Brave. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, yeah. Brian the Brave. Got oh, yeah. There. That's interesting. I didn't even know. I, th- I know him from Eat Lizards. I didn't know that he was a gamer, to be honest. Uh, he, at the very end, he was, we were like, so where can we find you? And he was like, nowhere this was it but he demolished um and shabim was like up at the top for so long uh that i was a little shocked and we actually had caveman win win one of our uh rounds the day before so i really had no idea what was going to go on and we all turned off our chat and just watched in real time to see who the real champion was. And it was just, it was a killer experience, man. But I feel like next time I'm going to have to put like one of them up against you. And just, (laughs) yeah, to be honest, I haven't, uh, I haven't played our beta to, for, I played with, with my mate for three or four hours one night, but outside of that and and trying it out for the first time for like 30 minutes or, or something like that. I'm a little bit scared. I've, I've got so much stuff to do at the moment that if I get addicted to that and I have a tendency, I was literally just talking to my girlfriend about that. I was like, remember when I got like addicted to playing the game and she was like, that was so bad. Seriously. Like you would be sitting there and then you're like, oh, I have to go for this AMA. And then I would just hear the game in the background. And I'm like, look, it was a gaming AMA. Like we do like talking while, (laughs) and it was just, it just goes down this path of like doing whatever I can to, to game. And so, yeah, I'm trying to keep my distance, but definitely once it goes PVP and we can do like, because I'm not sure what sort of rules you would have had to have made up some crazy sort of like standards and rules to make that tournament run. Like, you can do oh, yeah. it, but it's much, much easier once we have tournaments in build. And and so I'm waiting for that. And then certainly, yeah, I'll uh, I'll happily start training myself up and uh, and going up against some of your guys. Yeah, you can go up against me. I haven't had the chance to put in more than, you know, 15, 20 minutes here and there. So uh, you might beat me with your 30 minutes and it would be a go. really that's, nice tournament. <laughs> but yeah i mean you have made such an impression over the last couple weeks over the last month with everything that you guys have been doing over to alluvium and also what you've been doing for alluvium um Mm. because of polemos's close ties with you um i've been just across the board on everything you've been up to um for one you made an amazing impression at the first ever Australia crypto conference earlier this month. Um, And you had the opportunity to talk to everybody about your keynote speech, how to take crypto gaming mainstream. And before we even jump into the next conference that you went to, could you tell us about your experience there? Because you made such an impression with all of the branding across the event. I mean, your logo was everywhere. Your team was everywhere. And it was yeah, absolutely it was, beautiful. It was, it was pretty fun. It was, I, I got to be honest. Uh, it, it was very, very fun to have, I think we had seven or eight of our full-time people come. And, you know, it's not a short trip for, for guys like Rich to – come all the way from America. We had guys from Europe and, uh, and yeah, it was just fun to meet a lot of the team, you know, even, even someone like Nick who comes from Byron, who was just working the the stands all day. Uh, Andrew coming from the U S like it was, it was just a lot of fun. We had Pedro here for about a month. He went home uh, on Friday actually. And so, you know, South America, Europe, 
America, like seeing these guys come from these faraway places to to finally meet them and uh, and then just showcase the game in the way that we did, where we had even even kids sitting down and playing it. It sort of really made it real for me. And there were true gamers there as well. You know, like that that was the thing that that got me. Like I always talk about the the people that are in crypto now are first investors and secondly gamers. Might not be the case in your guild. I know you guys really, really focus on gamers, but sitting down and, and chatting to people and, and being able to, as one of the co-founders, being able to just like experience it with pe- <clears throat> with people for the first time, that was a very special feeling for me. And so going into my speech, which or, or the presentation that, that I did, I was pretty pumped up. I was... I was like, you know, this is this is a special thing that we're building and it's starting to get more and more real as more people get exposed to it and can play it and and whatever and so I really felt like I needed to I I mean, I look, I definitely don't think I I did as well as as what you're making it out or or whatever, so I really really appreciate that obviously, but uh but yeah, I think it was it was good and uh, we we actually what not many people know this, but we had worked or Florian had worked on a presentation that had like graphics that that were like interchangeable that were coming in and that pres- I had this basic presentation and I was like, man, we need to make it much much better than this. Like we're we're starting off with the the trailer. We can't just go into like here's a PowerPoint and then just me talking, right? Like we need some more juice on this. And so he spent like 10 hours doing this. And somehow I I don't want to throw anyone under the bus or like even the conference or whatever, but for whatever reason the old presentation is the one that I was working on. And I'd made a whole bunch of edits to it just to make it flow a little bit faster and whatever. And so I actually was working on something that I hadn't actually really practiced. And so I was a little bit frustrated by that. And there's a moment where you like, someone was like, I know when you realize, like you can see in my, I'm like, oh God, like this slide is not meant to be in here. And then I'm having to talk to it and whatever. So But you know what, at the end of the day, it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of practice for me as well. You know, I haven't done that sort of level of of public speaking that much. And, you know, public speaking was definitely something that was sort of something that I would would worry about two, three years ago. And now I finally feel like I'm I'm getting a hold on it and, and it's becoming more natural for me. So, uh, yeah, really appreciate that feedback. And I think just overall having the team there, having beta private two, uh, private beta two, which I didn't think was going to be there. And then, yeah, being able to present this vision that we have of really getting proper mainstream gamers to come across to crypto. That's, that's what I'm all about. So yeah, it was awesome fun. That's amazing. And Of course, something always goes wrong, right? Whenever you've prepared and like your team is ready, something always goes wrong. But I mean, at least you did get that opportunity to freshen up your public speaking skills because not too far after that, you got to jump on a panel uh, with San Diego on Token 2049, uh, where you coined, pun intended, the phrase interoperable blockchain game uh, to describe the three game ecosystem that the Alluvium team has created. Uh, Would you mind elaborating on that for anybody that wasn't able to attend? Yeah. So it it sort of came about when I first played the overworld, I just had enough. I was like, look guys, you keep talking about it in chat. I keep seeing screenshots. You're saying like there's harvesting and stuff. And I, I basically, I was like, I don't believe it. Right. Like I want to see it. And I have a, a weekly chat with our uh, head game designer, Ben. And, and I was like, dude, get me a build. Like I'm done. I, I want to see it now. I don't care. Like just, just get me a build. And 
not only was I blown away by the fact that you can literally, there's fusing, there's harvesting, there's all of the, the locomotion mechanics, movement mechanics, they're all in there. There's like, it's just, it's just a crazy experience. Like the only thing that isn't really there is more regions, right? Which is easily, we can, we can easily release something like that and say, you know, firstly, all the alluvials will still be able to be caught in this, you know, in two regions or three regions, however many we get to. But I just couldn't believe the, the scope that not only had we delivered, you know, not only is Alluvium Zero nearly ready and the, you know, you're running tournaments on the arena. So like that's definitely, definitely up to, up to scratch, even though there's improvements to be made there. But to see the overworld, that was just mind blowing, right? Like we've only been, like we've only had a team like working on this for 18 months now, like properly, properly working on it, which is super, super fast. But it wasn't until, and I was literally on the phone with Andre at the time, right? Which is one of our head game devs. And he was like, yeah, we can go into an encounter. And I'm like, what do you mean? So like, we can literally go into a, a, an encounter and capture an alluvial. And he's like, yeah, but here's the thing. Like, we probably won't be able to capture an alluvial, blah, blah, blah. And uh, because they've changed a whole bunch of, they, they haven't added the probabilities of catching alluvials yet. And so it's all messed up. And long story short, we caught one. And it was Amazing. that moment where I went from one gaming genre to another gaming genre that I was like, this is its own is genre, it. <laughs> right? Like this, this, yes, this is two games interconnected, but then I've run and like, and yes, we've just given ourselves fuel, unlimited amounts. <laughs> yeah. That's when the penny dropped, it's covered up. And, uh, then I thought to myself, but what if I didn't, what if I ran out of fuel, right? Like, which is a reality. Like now nothing oh, yeah. is a reality when you're playing these betas and, and alphas, like survival mode, we give you everything. That's not reality, right? You're going to be okay. in there. You might, you know, capture one alluvial, but then you're going to run out of fuel. You're going to need to go to alluvium zero. And then I was like, but that's another genre of game. And it's all interoperable. And so I basically, I hadn't spoken to Aaron in a while and this was always the plan. But like, again, seeing it in action, I said to Aaron, I go, dude, I need to speak to you like, like right away. Like this is, this is not normal. Like this is not, you, we're not just going to call this, hey, this is the, an RPG. This is a city builder game. This is an auto battler when it's all interconnected, like this is, we have to coin this something. And yeah, we came up with uh, an IBG, an interoperable blockchain game. And uh, yeah, I think it makes sense. I think it kind of sticks. And, and so, yeah, we presented that for the first time at token 2049, which was insane. By the way, there was like 7,000 people there. I saw the pictures of the after parties and I got jealous just from that. Like it looked like such a blast. That's the, that's the thing that not like you don't sort of, a lot of people don't see when you go to these, I had so many AMAs set up and I felt so bad for TSG. Cause I was like, we got to go on this tear. I want to hit 50 AMAs in 30 days. And you just couldn't like, not only were we getting hit up about like interviews and, and different little side things. We always had a dinner, like one night we had three dinners and it's like, how can you go to three dinners? Right? Like it's just ridiculous. And uh, we haven't really gone to many of these conferences when you compare us to a lot of other projects. And so people are keen to come up and like meet you and whatever. And it's just, honestly, it's exhausting and you get to like I love it. Obviously, it's a, it's an amazing feeling to to have built something that people care about so deeply. But like 300, 400 people on a single night that it's just like holy god! Like now I got to wake up tomorrow, go to the conference again, you got to speak again, and it's just like Jesus! Like it's not 
easy to to go to these things and then on top of it all i'm sitting here going i have actual work to do you know like i've got to get on these amas i've got to speak to all the marketing guys and talk to them about all this stuff and so yeah it it, they're kind of a distraction but at the same time they're needed but we've got to be very calculated on which ones we go to and and make sure that we don't let it consume us i completely agree it's it's something to where you feel almost as if you're a celebrity, which in a sense, I mean, you kind of are. I definitely you don't have feel like a celebrity, everybody me, but... asking for your attention. Like that's yeah, all it's... people want. Yeah. It's like, well, whereas a celebrity, it's kind of like, it's, it's twofold, right? It's like we, it always starts with, oh yeah, you know, I, I love what you're doing. I want to take a picture and check out my project. And it's like, and I'm not the type of person who's like able, Danny is way better at it than me. Danny's just like, sorry, you know, like, yep, I've got it. Another NFT project, blah, blah, like totally get it. Whereas me, I'm kind of like, yeah, show me what you got. And so I'm in a 15 minute conversation with someone that's building and they're, you know, they're building a triple A game. How many people are in the team? Oh, it's just me and this guy. And I'm like, okay. Uh, Thank you for using 15 minutes of my very precious time for this it's well, so, not so much very precious time like i don't i definitely don't take myself that seriously like at all but it's more just like the scheduling yeah. like yeah, you like, i'm sure it just destroyed your body to be so on constantly with everyone you talk to because you are excited but at the same time you're like all right i've got three dinners to go to yeah. Uh, I'm missing my, uh, my appetizer right now for my first one. <laughs> and, you know, so it's, it's no wonder that you, you've been sick and like all, cause it's because all of your energy went into providing the best experience possible for everyone that attended those conferences. Yeah. And you did yeah, a great yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And the fact that you were able to bring PB2 to the first event and you guys have officially released it and we've had a tournament about it. You guys have a tournament coming up. Like it's, that's all people are talking about. There are so many updates that go along with it. I tried to follow along in the spreadsheet. I mean, I read through it all. Um, but out of all of the updates made to PB2, what do you think are the most impactful improvements to the overall experience that will see its way through to the final delivery? I mean, it's not really, it does, uh, the thing that's probably the, the most welcome thing is probably not relevant when it comes to uh, PVP and, and private beta three. So it's not really going to matter, but when you're doing that, uh, when you're doing that survival mode and you get to like level 28 and you die and you got to go all the way back, it literally makes you want to punch yourself in the face. You're like, Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> so probably like at the most insignificant feature is the most significant for survival mode, which is the checkpoints. But when we talk about the scope, we added something like a hundred uh, additional alluvials to the private beta, which is just insane, right? Like that, n- there's no auto battler out there that gives you that level of, uh, of characters to choose from because it adds so much meta to it that you don't know what is going to win. Like I guarantee you that like I haven't looked and maybe people are getting much, much better and maybe I'm just terrible, but there's no way people have mastered PB2 yet. There's just so much that uh, there's so much complexity that has been added. And then you talk about augments and the way that augments work in that they, they can, you know, uh, you can choose two additional things on top to to buff your character. Then you can bind your ranger's affinity to the primary affinity of another alluvial. It just, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, oh my god! If I get if I get deep on this, like goodbye, 
to the world. I will literally yep. be all consumed. And the only reason, the only thing that I think is stopping it right now is uh, once again, the, the PPP. Completely agree. And that was something that was brought up a lot last night is as fun as it was for each person to play. Um, and we were actually going by checkpoint. You had three checkpoints and you could okay. decide if like that, your, your second checkpoint, that's your score. Or you could keep pushing forward. And like watching people sweat on webcam of like sitting there like, do I move forward? Do I stay? And all of the tactical movements that they did, it was just absolutely insane. And, you know, there so you had were 16 people. players. We had 16 players that got down to 18, or I'm sorry, 16 to eight to four to two. Four to, to one. Yeah. Um, over so, two I mean, days. Over two days, man. It was it was so exhausting, That's but crazy. I think that it actually like slowed some people down. Hopefully, because uh, it was even hard for me to keep up because they were using the augments. They were really taking into account every single move they made, and it was such it's a beautiful pretty crazy. Experience. Like I don't know what what prize did you guys put on the line. Uh, first place was a uh, tier one land and a hundred bucks. So it was a, uh, it was nice. a pretty good price and it kind of went down from there. So I think it was like 300, 200, 100, something like that. But you wanted to go after that. And we also had a bounty prize for the most alluvials killed, which Viper also won. So, I mean, it was just absolutely I'll tell you what, I'm definitely going to be sponsoring was... Oh yeah, I'm def. I'm definitely going to be sponsoring someone to uh, take out Viper. I don't. I don't like. I this, love that. Uh, uh, Just give me uh, all of the trade secrets and teach me how yeah. to play at like you know developer oh, level. No, this and person I'll come in a secret. <laughs> they'll that they, you, you you do too much for Polimos. I'm telling you, this person will be will be gaming like 16 hours a day. I'm pretty sure I know. Yeah, who I have it's no time. Be. We're bringing Damo <laughs> back. If 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 if, if you guys. There'll be a few people in the chat who remember Damo, but uh, yeah, he's a pro Rocket League player and he's just a super smart dude. I'm going to hit him up and be like, all right, man, I've, you know, if, when I'm giving away in my quizzes 10, 15, 20K worth of prizes, sorry, I'm, I'm, those have to be really hard people. questions. I they are pretty hard questions, but they're meant to be hard questions because of giving away such crazy prizes. Had I known that you keep people engaged for two days and you've put on, you know, a thousand bucks worth of prizes, it's it's maybe uh, maybe I'm overshooting my random quizzes and uh, I need to just settle down a little bit on those. Well, I mean, if you are going to have more, please uh, let us I'll know. Let you because... know. The thing yes. is, I don't let anyone know because I want people to be active in Discord like it was back in the day. I still think we have one of the most active Discords out there, but it's nowhere near what it used to be. But yeah, once the market comes back, everyone's everyone's going to come back. Well, and this kind of, I'm, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Uh, in the past, there have been rumors of Alluvium setting a world record of providing the world's largest prize pool for esports tournaments. Um, that's a pretty big deal. Is it still in play? Uh, yeah, it is. It is. It is something that we definitely want to do some somewhere down the line. We portioned off 10% of our tokens for things like in-game yield, tournaments, achievements, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely something that's on the cards. We also have a very, very good head of partnerships now. And from his point of view, he's like, let's not use the tokens and let's get a whole bunch of sponsorship from people like, you know, big, big exchanges out there and other DeFi protocols. And so I, what I hadn't really, you know, I thought about, you know, you get Logitech, Razor and stuff like that to, to sponsor tournaments but I hadn't really thought about it from a crypto standpoint because, as I said, if we're going to onboard mainstream people and they have no idea what crypto is, 
if the thing that onboards them it has advertisements and sponsorships from things like exchanges, when they get their prize money or when they earn a little bit of yield in the game, it's like, where do I go? Oh, okay. Is it Coinbase? Is it Binance? Is it some other tier one exchange? What wallet do I use? All of these sort of things, which, uh, you know, traditionally that's a, a very, very tried and tested marketing method for mm -hmm. companies and we should be doing stuff like that and he's i'm probably a little bit alluvium blind now where i've just been living in this world and even though i come from that that uh background of traditional marketing and and business he's looking at it and he's like no man we'll get this fully sponsored don't use the alluvium tokens for that blah blah so maybe we have to use some combination of of both but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's made me start thinking about things differently. And especially when it comes to like Aluva Fest, where we will be putting on a million dollar tournament. And, uh, yeah, so like that, that in itself, oh, yeah. the fact that you got people engaged for two days with a thousand bucks and we're putting on a million dollars, it's going to be, uh, if, if my IIP gets approved and it's nearly done by the way. So there's, there's one leak for you, but but yeah, I think it will. And uh, and that's going to be very, very exciting. And you said on Twitter, Aluva Fest is so much better because why go to a conference when you can go to a festival? Do you have like anything scoped out for this? Or is this just like an idea that you're like, this is going to happen because I'm going to make it happen? Well, it started off by so it was actually Danny who was like god we should run our own conference and once you put a seed in my head it starts growing and growing and growing and I hadn't spoken to Grant about this I hadn't spoken to Aaron about this and when I did eventually speak to Aaron about this he was like hey let's add the esports tournament in as well and then I was like Jesus we have the holy trinity we've got the crypto we've got the artist, and we've got the esports. You mash it all together, and uh, the the guys that we're working with, they're not mucking around. They did a, a recon of the uh, the potential sites of this already, and uh, and yeah, they're they're doing this all you know behind the scenes sort of stuff, and and they're just super super excited to to get involved. But I said, like, I didn't even know that. And I was like, seriously, we need to first get the IIP approved before we can do things like that. But yeah, I've, I've built out a whole uh, business plan of what this is. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to, I'm going to chunk it into an IIP that doesn't have all the details because we just, we can't go into all the details. But think multiple stages world-class artists and and the thing is a lot of people go how are you going to get world-class artists and not only does uh do i know a few just just through knowing you know the the founder of this this agency that works with hundreds of these artists but a lot of them hold ild like that's the crazy thing yeah. right like they look they're they're not stupid guys like that and, and girls right they look at it and they go which one has the best graphics where's a game that i would actually play i'm going to invest my money into that and so it's crazy the amount of people that reach out to me from you know these conversations and and it's like you're holding ILV like what like so there's that there's going to be uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of DeFi and uh, crypto native people that It'll be the biggest crypto lineup you've ever seen in Australia, like ever. We don't, it's very, very hard to, to get people to come to Australia because it's so far, but we've got a massive, not only do we have a huge amount of people in, uh, in DeFi and crypto in Australia building their own projects. I'm in a telegram that started off with like 15 projects early last year. And now there's like, 95 projects that have come out of australia and so there's a huge amount of uh, like the crypto con showed us that there's a huge amount of australians but if we get people that would fly to australia just to see the artists 
let alone the crypto people, let alone the esports tournament. We just do what we always do in Alluvium. We literally take an idea and then we add more scope, add more scope, add more scope, and we just go, let's take on the biggest festivals in the world. Fuck it. Why not? You know, so. And then you make it happen because you're Alluvium. And that's kind of the most exciting part about it is like, I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to be epic, which is why, like, I need to book my plane ticket now. So, uh, do well, you let have me like, get the IIP approved? No, not yet. Okay, I was no, like no, really I'll, hoping. <laughs> I'll get the IIP approved, but ideally, that in the IIP we're saying November. So, yeah, and, and and I think that's a really really good time in Australia. I don't know if it's going to be Melbourne, Brisbane, or. Uh, Sydney yet we, we've got quite a few venues in mind it's a pretty unique situation we we also as you can see from the chat we need to to figure out where we're going to have a boxing ring as well because apparently there's going to be celebrity charity boxing matches oh which yes I think would be hilarious but uh but yeah so we we need to find a place that can have the the conference rooms and breakaway rooms and like enough for thousands and thousands of people to be able to go to these things. Cause the, the frustrating thing for me at these conferences, a lot of the time is you go and everyone has the same ticket and there's like keynotes that are on and there's 200 seats or 300 seats. And it's like, there's, you've got 500 no people room. that are, trying to like look over the, and it's like, what are you doing? Like, what, like, what did you not think that that would happen? And that's where Danny mm -hmm. comes in and he's run conferences before and he's like, this is just bullshit. And so we want to make it. So I don't know, I've got some ideas where there's going to be like NFT ticketing uh, payments where you can pay in like ILV and stuff like that. Like we've got some crazy wild ideas, but I also want people to be able to pre book, the, the stuff that they want to go to, right? So where you have like a seat where you know, no matter what, right? Like that you're going to be ushered to your seat. And if you want to see that particular person, you're not fighting against 10,000 other people. It's literally just, I, I booked that early. And, you know, you might not be able to book every single keynote depending on the ticket that you have. Like I've got a lot of shit going on in my head where I'm thinking of like, how do we do this? But we have a lot of smart people that are working with us. And uh, and yeah, it's certainly going to be one of the biggest crypto-based events that, that has ever been put on. I, I guarantee you that. I have no doubt in my mind. And people are going wild in our chat right now. So uh, I'm, I'm very match. excited. Yeah, they're, they are not getting off the top of the boxing matches. So you have to fit a boxing ring somewhere between the stages at least um, yeah, well, just for public viewing. <laughs> well, no, that's I mean, a really thing. when you've got a million dollars being or potentially a million dollars being put on the line for an esports tournament, you're going to have a lot of people viewing that tournament. It's, it's going to be, there's going to be sponsorships to like sponsored teams. Like this is very, very slowly going to build uh, or probably not slowly, very fast going to grow into a monster of a thing. And it started off, it's not really <laughs> Grant, the rib taker Warwick. That is his name. He took my rib, that's for sure. But no, it's, it's a marketing event. You know, if we put on something that gets massive mainstream media, not just in Australia, but across the globe, saying that we brought all of these people into Australia, all of these artists were able to learn crypto because that's a huge part of this, right? Like Massive. not just teaching mainstream artists. Like I've had multiple conversations with some of these musicians that they're like, what do I do? Like, I don't know crypto. And it made me think back to like 2016 or 2015 where I didn't know anything about crypto and it's scary as shit, right? Like you're like, I'm not oh, yeah. sending this money to a random place. And then like confirmations need to come through. And then they might like, it's scary. And they have disposable income, right? Like they make a lot of money doing this and they want to invest in things for their future. And so I think that narrative alone for a news story is 
huge, right? Like if you've got 10, 15, 20 artists sitting in a room learning about DeFi, that's cool in my head. Like maybe I'm too nerdy or whatever, but in my eyes, that's that's really pushing mainstream because then who knows? You might have one of these artists on stage start blurting out random tokens that they've invested in just because they're excited, right? And and yeah, you know, it's a, it it's a huge community there, event whatever. and it's for yeah. everyone. And I think that that's going to be really beautiful. And I think, I mean, kudos to you for being the first to be like, this is happening and uh, get ready for it. So um, we'll definitely all keep our eyes peeled. But, you know, kind of going back to the topic of introducing mainstream gamers um, and, and PB2, just because I, I want to talk about all the fun stuff. But I know that we're like here for PB2 talk. Um, yep. With with private beta two, um, how did T zero fleet free to play alluvials help introduce these players into Web three gaming that might not know what they're doing? Well, I, it, I mean they're kind of irrelevant. Like you get every character anyway. It's free to play. Yeah. The whole PB two is free to play right now anyway. But once we go open beta, T zero alluvials are there for people to be able to collect them. They don't cost anything. You can literally get a, a tier zero shard by harvesting. It won't cost, like, obviously you need to, to forge it and whatever still. So like there's some effort that goes into it, but you don't need to pay for anything. And it's your ability to go and then collect it. You can then level it up just like any other alluvials. And so you might be able to get some value out of it without putting any money into the system, but it's really there for people to be able to try out the game. We're confident that if you're a Pokemon player or if you are a team fight tactics player or whatever, and you want to go try out a new game, there's just like asking them to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars is just not going to fly if you want mainstream adoption. Yes. And so that's why they exist. They're still really, really cool. They still have awesome abilities and, and stuff like that, as you can see with the, the current ones in, in private beta too. And uh, so, yeah, they're just a, a tool for people to be able to try out the game. We're confident enough to say, hey, we're not going to take your money until you're ready to 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 really step it up and play. No, I, I love that because it, that is such a hard thing to sell people on that aren't already in this space. It's like, you want me to just take my money and trust that the internet and every guide that's out there will just let me play this game that I don't know if I'll like or not because I don't know what web three is. Yeah, and it's, 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 yeah, it's not going to fly. It's not going to fly. But I think that your way about doing this, it gives them that introduction that gets them hooked. It's what will get them addicted to the game. And then it'll just give you even more um, exposure for people to mm -hmm. attend the conference, AKA, the festival uh, yeah. that you're actually going to be putting on. So you're going to have to prepare for some more seats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, look, do, do I think we're building a game which we could sell for 80 bucks or 90 bucks or whatever in mainstream? Yes. Like I genuinely, genuinely do. As I said, we're coming after Riot and Team Fight Tactics in terms of that arena. We're coming after Pokemon. We're trying to modernize it and make it so... They can't, you know, like I love Pokemon, right? It's it's the IP that is probably the, the closest to me, but we're here to modernize it and really give the, the people that fell in love with it a new game to play. And so do I think if, if there wasn't free to play versions of, uh, of our different games that people would work it out and still take that risk? Yes, I do. But is it going to block 80% or 70% or 60% or whatever? If it's any number above 1%, then you just don't do it, right? We, yeah. we don't do that at Alluvian because there's two options. 
There's the easy way and the hard way. The easy way was just, nope, sorry, this is a play to own game. And for you to play, you need to put money in and that's it. Or we can say, choose. There's both. Now, that means making more alluvials, designing the game even further and, and putting a lot more effort into every single factor. But that's the difference between Alluvium and most other studios out there is we don't skimp on anything. If there's something that needs to be done that can make us any amount better that isn't just so insignificant that we look stupid, then we'll do it, right? And in the case of free-to-play, yeah, we, someone asked me the other day, they were like, I, I think you guys even had free-to-play uh, built into your, your roadmap before games like Axie. And I was like, we did because I, my, I myself experienced Axie very, very early on. And I was on the phone with, <clears throat> with Grant and, and Aaron. And I was like, I actually need to buy a thousand dollars worth of assets to play this game. And Aaron was like, I'm sorry, that is the most ridiculous thing. I've." And Grant was like, do not put a thousand dollars into that. You're going to lose it. Like that's obviously like that game cannot. And I was like, no, it's a real game. Like I've done the DD on it. Like I'm telling you, it's just super basic. And he was like, dude, and that's what real gamers are thinking right now. So yeah, I don't know. We, we, we need the free to play. I think it's going to make things like much, much more easier to, and palatable for gamers to take because there's no risk. You don't even need a wallet. You just play. Yeah. And, you know, something that really stuck out to me that I think is the hot topic of the moment is the ownership element. We are all gamers, and I don't want to talk about um, how much money I have spent across all of the games I've played buying, you know, new skins, Neither new weapons, I, new cards. Like, it it's insane. But now we're kind of moving away from that original term into saying like, okay, you can now own your assets. It, it's not earn or anything like that. It's ownership. And I think that that is something that is going to change how gamers really think about this industry. It's, it's not about the, the microtransactions that will never give you any return anymore. It's you getting to choose how you want to spend your money and how you want to proceed after you own that asset. And that's one of the really cool things about Illuvium is all I want to do is jump in and catch alluvials and battle them and play on the land. And I mean, there's so much that goes into it um, that it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, with, with PB2 out, we've seen kind of like the start of the arena. Um, you've been everywhere leaking all of these amazing images and videos of overworld being played. Uh, are there any additional details that you might not have leaked yet that you could possibly highlight since that is like kind of, kind of your thing? Uh, or have you, have you said all that you I, can say? I'm not even joking. I don't have anything more. I asked Alex. That's amazing. For, uh, I, Ask Alex for the. I'll ping him now because I know we've only got like 10 minutes left. So I'll see if he can put it together. But I asked him for the uh, fusing video the other day and he was like, they're, they're working on it now. So let me see if I can get that. Yeah. And that would be, I mean, if it doesn't happen, the thing, it's about, really fine. The thing that I want to say about ownership, and, and again, it just speaks to this ethos of like Aaron's brain where, where he goes, like ownership is enough, right? Like that's enough. That's what gamers sit here and go, if I could just own my assets, then that means that maybe I can't make money or whatever, but I can recuperate some, right? Like I go out and buy, buy a car, I am able to then sell that car. I might depreciate in value a little bit over time, but I can recuperate some of my money, right? That 
isn't what happens. There just sinks in games, right? You just sink your money in and you're never able to get it out. Aaron goes, let's take it to another level and say, no, not only will you be able to own this asset, but you're able to then take it into another game and another game and another game. So even if you get bored, you don't even need to recuperate your your money, right? You can just go, hey, I'm bored of this game. I'm going to now go to the MOBA or I'm going to go to the to the racing card game, or I'm just going to take my asset somewhere. And so it's just always thinking about which we always try to be one or two steps ahead of the, the curve in terms of what people are thinking about. And, you know, it's really, really going to show. It's really, really going to show. Yeah. And I think that for me, it's just, it's the bragging rights at the end of the day. Like, I want to jump in there and play my absolute best to show off my my open sea, you know? And yeah. the, I'm, I'm not in it necessarily to gain <laughs> any additional profit back. It's just a fact of being like, oh, oh, what have you done today? Oh, yeah, I just caught this. It's fine. No big deal. I know you don't have it yet, but I do. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's where the competitive side of me comes in because then you can take that into all of the additional games. Yeah. So, if you're the only one with a, with a squiz or a Ramphy or whatever, mm-hmm. and you take that into the cart racer, it's not going to be better than other characters, right? That will be a fully yeah. balanced out game, but it's a flex. It's like you, what it, I, it, this chick's just brought in a Ram fire cart. Like I haven't even seen that. Right. Like, and, Maybe there's only one that's caught. And so, like, yeah, I totally, trust me, I'm with you on that one when it comes to, to that sort of a flex. Yeah. It's it's all about just kind of, like, showing your friends. Sorry, I feel so bad. Place. I'm, like, so stuffed up here and You're I'm, like, okay. eyes are watering and shit. But, it's uh, the fact yeah, that I you're like, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, no, uh, it's much appreciated. Uh, and it's almost over. I know everybody will be, like, absolutely heartbroken and people are saying that they need merch for christmas so i think that we're going to also have to have the the flex of who gets their merch store up first polymos or alluvium it's kind of like you and me up against each other here and see how good it gets i can leak a few things like that oh i mean absolutely i will never say no to that Actually, what I'll do, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, are, are you good with like pulling things up and stuff like that? Because I'll I'll send you a bunch of shit. Yeah. Or maybe I can share my screen one sec. Oh, yeah. You can share your screen too. You should have the ability. Um, and while you're doing that, this question might be too far out there, but um, there are rumors uh, about skins for buildings in Alluvium land. So what's the next big thing for land in your opinion? And I will pull this up Uh, while we're talking. So this is a little bit, you probably can't even read that, but that's the type of uh, box unopening that we're thinking about, like where you've got, so off to the right here, you've got like the which is biodegradable so like each item that you have is in individual packaging that goes inside a unique box it has a thank you message has like a little reveal on the bottom here which i won't go into but like we're thinking premium across the board i'm obsessed with high fashion and like that experience that you get when you like once you go there there's no going back in, in my opinion. And so like, um, I'll pull up some more stuff. Yeah. Um, I have to jump and say, this is clean. The package I am. So my, my background is in graphic design and let me just say right now, that packaging is so clean. I am, I'm having a little bit of a heart attack right now. Just like that nice, nice rainbow gradient that you have going around the edge of the box. Like, so I am the, salt. It's the Florian touch, well. I tell you that. 
That's all I needed. <laughs> hmm. Why is this? Sorry. But, oh, you're you're all good. Um. So I mean that that merch is really beautiful, and it your team really There's knows what more. they're doing. Uh, but I'll show you some actual. Once an alluvium uh, gaming mouse pad. <laughs> yeah, we're we're working on those. Uh, but that won't be in the that will be in a separate drop. That'll be in like yeah. a gamers. We're we're doing collections. Oh but check like this that. guy out. I don't know. Have you seen the Atlas one? No. So sick. These are terrible are we... quality, so my oh, guys no, probably not me. hating me right now, but uh, one sec. This is so cute. It's just ridiculous. Um so I think that Atlas is like the most loved alluvial at this point. I mean, it's used for every single one of my emojis in Discord. <laughs> I don't know how to talk without using Atlas. Um, our amazing community manager, Rash, named his cat after Atlas. Like that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that's the pretty dedication cool. we have. <laughs> So you hear things like that and you're like, okay, that's 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 pretty cool. But yeah, that's throw that you. throw that Atlas one up. Oh, let me see real quick. Oh uh, you know what? When if you tell me who that person is who named their cat Atlas, I'll send them this t shirt Atlas. for free. I yeah, I will let Arash know to he's in the chat right now. He said yes. Oh, look yeah. at that. I love the drips off the shoulder. You know, this is beautiful. So so the difference is like when you get merch usually, it's just it's like it's super thin, it's not good quality, like they they haven't thought of of much details, what I call like the accents of the shirt. And we've got a really, really good team working on this. You've got Vincent who's blasting out like the, the concepts. Now this is another collection. This isn't now a lot of this stuff is uh, not this stuff, but a lot of these have been leaked before. Uh, into a, a lot of the essentials collection has been leaked already. And we're okay with that because if you think fashion, there's fashion shows, what's a fashion show there to do is to say, Hey, this is coming in the fall or this is coming in the summer or whatever. These are uh, designs that we're working on and they, they will be coming. And this is part of our alluvial collection. And I'll show you one more because I don't, Adi, you can tell me, do you want to see? I want to the... see anything that you can show me. I mean, okay. I, I'm leaving this up to you at this point because this is, insane and i've been keeping up with your discord i have been like everywhere possible trying to see all the merch because even just like the black on black design it's so clean mm. and like it just seems like every it really is different collections that you're planning so like this one has a completely different style but this appeals to me so much that I could see myself rocking this and just instead of just having like you know just our faces I'll have like a full body like hey like I need to show off show off my 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 swag yeah no it's <laughs> it's pretty damn cool and if it's if we get the you know what really you know what my favorite thing is out of out of absolutely everything in the merch and it's made me just go like and grant said this and like he he designed it so you know when he said it i <laughs> took a little grain of salt or whatever but this obelisk is iconic oh yeah it it will end up being like that i see that and i'm like People have even commented like, what, what brand is that? And I'm like, it's, it's our own merch. And this is like not even part, like this was just something that Roger did like seven, eight months ago. But you see that on a shirt. Like if I just had that just here, just like as a little logo there it, and that was it. It's I so would be amazing. So clean. Like I'm, I'm into like the simple thing. It's interesting. It's like Porter, who's our head of merchandise, 
and Grant, they want like a little bit louder. So does Roger, like like much more louder. Whereas Florian and I, and Florian's French, so he knows what he's talking about more than the other guys. And myself, we like the cleaner, like just simple designs, but but really well thought out. So like metal tags that have like alluvium on them that are tiny and like at the bottom, like what you would see in a proper you know, Gucci shirt or a oh, Dior yeah. shirt or whatever, right? Like they think about the little things. And the crazy part is it doesn't cost that much more. Mm-mm. It's like you're paying for the brand. And in our case, we don't need to charge a ridiculous amount. Yes, it's going to cost us a little bit more to make that unboxing feel unreal, right? Like where you're like, oh, yeah. whoa, they've, there's packaging in packaging. There's a note in there. There's just everything. It looks so cool. But it doesn't cost that much more. You're talking about a couple of bucks here and there to, to go to that next level where it costs is in the time and the thinking that goes into like, we've, we've been here like six months now working on this collection and we're finally getting to a point where we're like, okay, now I don't care what anyone says. There's no one crazy enough to build a whole, like, like, merch team number one and then go in this deep like our first stuff was just print alluvium and and i was like no like they, they, no we're Can't not do doing just that. that can't do that and then once we got grant involved he also loves high fashion and he was like 100 percent, like no way like we need to make sure that this is next level and so i've got a few more pieces to show you just before we hop off check i don't have another meeting no, I don't. Great. How, how long do you have? Do you have another two to three hours? Because I want to see cool. every league possible. No. I, I will turn it into the, the league show. Uh, okay, let's have a look here. So you've seen this Malura one, but this is on a shirt. Now that's pretty sick. Ooh, okay. We've got to bring that up. Okay, that... That might be one of my favorites now. That is so sick. Yeah. You're kidding me. Now, yeah. Now, like, this is just a concept. So now Porter's thinking, like, can we get, like, some of the nature stuff that's growing off Malura there, like, featured up the top right and possibly. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're going to go a little bit. I mean, it's already pretty, pretty hectic, but. You know, maybe you make Malura slightly smaller and have more of the the nature across. Maybe you've got some flowers a, across the rim of the 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 shirt or whatever. Like I don't know, we we go pretty crazy with this stuff. I've with the, these guys have spent hours and hours and hours working on this, but uh, I've got Totopi. I don't think we've li- we've leaked Totopi's one, so that might be a full brand new leak, and it's so I'm- cute. I am okay with this. What I absolutely loved is that you still had the obelisk. It was just up on the back of the neck Mm. ever so slightly. And to where you, you know, you have somebody behind you and uh, all of a sudden it's over because that's all that you need to see. So I'm going to pop this over to here. (gasps) Oh, that's fun. So, like, you've got the obelisk there. Totopia's yep. just next level. Like, <laughs> it's so cute. It's so cool. But, like, who thinks of this? Of the wrapping it around the shoulder. You know what it's I mean? Beautiful. Like, it makes it so, no matter what you're seeing, like, this is our style. Like, you're going to be looking at the back, like, what the fuck is going on here? Right. And then you get, you, zoom out and it's like oh right like now if you know you know right like there's going to be people out there that are like what is that that looks really cool that's super cute but like the alluvium people will be like sick shirt dude or (laughs) awesome shit like you know what i mean like it's uh it's pretty cool so yeah i think that's pretty much everything that i've got but yeah the point there is we're we're going oh i've got one more for you i'm not sure if you've seen this but the thing that i love about high fashion is just that last five percent right like it's 
And it's not about, for me, it's not about the brand or anything like that. It's literally, I mean, it is a little bit, I guess, but <laughs> it's, it's more about the attention to detail that they go to. And so like this guy's eyes are going to be like little buttons, not, not like buttons oh. that sort of like flip around or anything, but like just ever so slightly coming out of the shirt and that's going to be, yeah, that's the, yeah. Own, as a graphics designer, you know where I'm coming from, right? Yeah. Like that, that, that extra little bit of detail is what is going to make this shirt pop. And yep. it's a very basic shirt, right? Like it's obviously got the obelisk on the back, but it's not it's, basic though. And, and yeah, that, that's, that's the most that, beautiful thing about it is that it's so far from basic to me that it, this has been the, the shirt kind of collection that has been standing out in my head. Cause I'm like every other brand would be so against something this quote unquote minimal. But to me, this is so clean and sleek. And with mm. the other collection, having the little details come over the shoulder, this isn't something that was thrown together in five minutes. This was thought no. out. And I even saw on the line work, when you zoomed in on the t-shirt, it was a little rough. It wasn't super clean, straight lines. Like the amount of detail that has gone into this. It it's concept. Is we're, we're trying to bring, yeah, we're trying to bring our artists' personalities out. Like this is, this is our time. And we've literally said to like Vincent and Roger and stuff, like go be you, right? Like yeah. you're building this IP and like, yes, there's, there's big block out stuff like this where like, if you know, you know, sort of thing, but see this little guy down there. That you can't see it; it's it's too low res. But that's a tiny little metal plaque that has alluvium on it, and it oh, that's you know, crazy. like it's that kind of shit that that takes it to the next level. So I don't know really... that I've seen the shirt. Hold on, that was hey. that was also really nice. Yeah, I no, I know. It. Like this, I'm just going through this. this so uh, you've seen the jacket, obviously. Um, I, I I'm worried about myself because I mean, a I am now officially canceling Polimos's uh, merch line until we one up you, which I don't know if that's possible. Uh, B I'm also going to spend all of my money collecting your merch over our own because this is just beautiful. All right, this is the last one. This okay. these these are like concept stuff and uh, one sec. This is pretty high res, so it's taking a while to load. But look at this Ramphy. Like, come on, this Ramphy on a shirt, I'm out. Like, I'm sorry. If I see that, I'm like, that's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Like, seriously. If uh, you say it's the cutest thing you've ever seen, take my money now. I'm telling you, this thing is real, real cute. One sec. I don't I don't think you understand my hype about alluvium. My hair is purple for you. So you can only imagine how crazy this shit's going to get whenever these lines actually drop. I might just change my hair to match whatever outfit I plan on wearing for the day. <laughs> like look uh, at that Ramsey. Look at that. Guy. He's been in battle so he's he's got a bandaid over his nose like it's just where do you come up with this shit? Like the coffee atlas with the little th with like, him looking over his shoulder. The oh, turtle. Ah. Also... Oh. These guys have been battling, so he's they're smooth. they've they've got some wounds and stuff. Look at his boxing. <laughs> he's boxing the shoes. The thing on the shoes. Oh my god! And okay, I like that he is mid kickflip on the skateboard we yes. need to appreciate that these are action shots <laughs> literally it's, i must it's, put it's... in a request at some point for some sort of roller skating something because i will wear it to every skate park every event like it's over Look, but I, just, yeah it's beautiful i like that the even atlas is, has its own merch on the merch yes yeah. so meta <laughs> Meta in the metaverse right here. Literally his little tail <laughs> flopping out. He's like, what do you want? What are you looking at? 
That's me <laughs> he's every just it's, it's like his boss has hit him up halfway through the morning and he's walking along, <laughs> about to go to his cubicle. And he's just Why? like, they're, they're like, true. Atlas. And he's like, <laughs> it's just so cute. Oh, I love we it. We need the mugs love. now so we can match this exact outfit. Ooh. Like of us looking over our shoulder, upset that our boss. For you. I got something for you. I haven't even seen this myself, so let me just see if this is leakable. I am speechless. I think you have literally sold okay. just if you wanted to just make profit off of merch, you've already made back every penny you've put in and probably eight times over. Yeah. So, I mean, we, the thing about it is I'm just downloading this now. I've got you a very, very, very juicy leak here. But again, I did this on an AMA ages ago and it, oh, not quick. I don't know what an age is anymore. Maybe yeah. like three weeks ago, which is like 40 <laughs> AMAs ago. But uh, they've caveated this with it's super early. It's not done. It gives you a very basic outline. It may change. So like disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Do not don't get your heart it. set on it. It might even get better than what it currently is because that's what we've come to know and see from Alluvium. So yes. <laughs> no, it definitely will get better than this. Like I'm saying this is like super, super early. So just give me one sec. Okay. I mean, just the amount of effort. Yeah, my wallet can't take anymore. So true, scrub Scrub-a-dub. Because uh, I'm right there with you. I'm already budgeting in my head how I'm going to be able to afford every single one of these and i'm not letting go of my super cute pink mozart like that will stay with me forever but at a certain point i'm gonna have to own every single piece of merch you guys release and I, there's gonna have to be some some give all right i'm pulling it up on the screen because this is oh what all is right, you this? ready for this? I'm literally, I've seen this. I'm going to hide seconds. myself for more, more screen time because what? Okay, ready? So you've got all your alluvials here. This is fusing. Here we go. There it is. So now, obviously, oh my God. super, 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 super early leak. Probably shouldn't have leaked that, but, you know. You know what? Leak. It's it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I'm so glad I was muted and off screen because my jaw dropped. The advancement of just the animations and all of the little details. I love that it, like, just kind of, like, really does merge into one. It's It was, ugh. It was beautiful. And yeah, uh, I don't know. If you, that, that, that's probably like, uh, it'll probably be something like five or six times better than that. But don't tell anyone oh, yeah. I, I leaked that. That's, uh, that de I, don't, I don't think anyone's leaked that. I was literally getting shit from. Uh, so, yeah, so it'll be better UI. They say yeah. it'll be better UI. It'll have visual effects. It'll have sound and it'll have way better animation. So, yeah, I basically just gave you the bare, bare bones. That's uh, the best leak I think I have ever had on an AMA. So I feel so honored. And I like our chat is blowing up. And uh, I'm, I'm dying at the I smell a Grant versus Kieran boxing match after these. That leaks. is never going to happen. He will be can take me on. Out of me, so I won't come out of that alive. But um, <laughs> and now I'm looking and it's like, okay, the final look will not be in the coming beta as Grant is working on visual ideas still. So I definitely shouldn't have leaked that, but you know what? But, he leaks everything. So there you go. I got, yeah. One why don't you get to leak stuff just because no, no, it's, it's equal here. And because we he's already leaked it. So. But anyway, I think, uh, yeah, we're, we're out of time. 15 
we should we should probably wrap up i'm yeah, starting to i need some more codrill and uh yeah get some rest and uh you know take care of yourself because this is just the beginning of just an amazing line of beautiful things that you have coming to appreciate life it. and really, we are really going to keep, keep up to date with everything alluvium if you guys haven't already jump in their discord follow them on twitter um on instagram whatever your platform is don't miss a single leak or announcement because everything that's coming out is massive um thank you so much kieran for joining me today on this polemos and alluvium AMA. I want to say PB2, but at this point, it was it was all alluvium all day. So thank you for staying on uh, no a little bit longer. I know that we all absolutely appreciated it beyond belief. So uh, oh, good. thank you to everyone that listened and watched. And uh, until next time, we will see you soon. See you soon. Thanks, Thanks Bria. So Bye. Bye.